that's so cute about planning. So if people have got a, just a newly acquired a garden or they've just got a garden that they want to turn into a wildlife garden, what would you recommend to people in terms of planning? I think the most important thing like with any garden is to know where the sun is and where the shade is, any damp bits, any really cold bits, because that's going to inform the plants that you can grow well in each area of your garden. But for us, we just planned the layout, didn't we? Because we wanted, we knew we needed somewhere to sit. So we sort of planned the borders around that. Um, and then watch to see what the sun was doing and things like that. So I think it is an important thing to do, definitely. Yeah, take into consideration what you're wanting the, the garden to do for you because mm. you want it to be fantastic for wildlife, but if you need somewhere to play football, you're going to need a lawn. But if you don't need that, then you could have something else, a pond instead, say. Um, so it's about deciding how you're going to use it. Are you going to sit out there and have your morning coffee, in which case, where is the morning sun? Mm. Or are you going to have your meals out there in the evening, in which case, where's the evening sun? And that changes throughout the year. So mm. it's really important to get a good idea of where you stand before you actually start putting plants in the ground. Mm. Yeah, it also allows you, if you've got an overall plan to aim for, to maybe build your garden over a really long period of time. Not everyone has lots of time or money to do that, you know, sort of grand designs type thing. So certainly with this, like we, we built like the planter first because we got some sleepers to do that with. Mm. And then we sort of added bits in as we got the materials that we could do it. But we always had that final plan in our minds to sort of aim for mm. which I do recommend doing it that way as well it really yeah. helps having a plan but then being adaptable depending on what you can acquire for free or, or what might pop up on its own that you didn't exactly. know yeah, that's that really kind of important yeah. yeah always look and see what you've got already as well yeah if you can they say the good advice is just to watch your garden for a year and that's hard to do. You can hold yourself back. You can, yeah. <laughs> For the first year, if you just want to sow some manuals into a pot, that will give you something to do. But yeah, if you can just sit and watch the first year, you get to see what insects are coming in. Because things like um, at the mining bees, hmm. you might find you've got a mining bee colony in your garden, which you wouldn't know until you sat and watched it. And you, you'll see the telltale vo volcanoes in the spring. Um, but you don't know that when it's winter and you're first starting, you know. So you, you need to give it time to find what's already using your garden. Hmm. So how is the planning of a small wildlife garden different to planning a larger garden? What kind of things do people need to bear in mind? I don't think there's that much difference. Mm. I mean, we did do a little scale drawing, but mm. really it was a back of the fag packet type. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was very basic, but it was enough. Um, I think if you've got a bigger garden, you've got more opportunity to do a bigger range of things mm. on a bigger scale, obviously. So when you've got a smaller garden, it's important to realise you can't do everything. You can't fit everything in. Mm. Everyone wants a meadow, a pond, a tree. Yeah. Uh, you you kind of have to pick and choose what, what would work best in your space. But another tip we would give is also, if you can, go up to the top floor of your house and look around, see what your neighbours are doing because quite often they, they'll be doing something that you wouldn't necessarily want in your garden, but it's still beneficial to wildlife. Mm. So next door's got a lawn, for example, which is actually good for certain things. The blackbirds feed in it, but we therefore don't need to have a lawn in our garden because that's catered for next door. Mm. So it meant we could do something else. Mm. So that's a really good thing to do as well. Just see yeah. what your neighbours are up to. Spy on your neighbours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't go and talk to them. <laughs> just, just get in your window and have a look. Yeah. <laughs> that's your yeah, advice. That's it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 